Hello, this is Rail Rider, and today we're going to review the Lionel 2022 Volume 1 Catalog. Ah, the Norfolk and Western Class A's. Looks like 1218's the only one with the gloss finish. That means 1218's going to be the first one to sell out. Before the catalog came out, Lionel posted a video about this engine on YouTube, and turns out that the surprise feature the whole time was the four f***ing digit addressing. Lionel said that that feature's never been done before in O-Gage. Well, that's true. However, in HO scale, it's been done all the f***ing time. So, that's the surprise feature they were sitting on? How f***ing upsetting. You can't even activate it with a legacy remote. You need the new command system to do so. Which hasn't even came out yet. Well, this is my chance to get a second engine with safety valve steam. You wanna know, I'm gonna get this, and it's gonna be 1218. My second option is gonna be none of them. I only want 1218. Hey, looks like it's got Ash Pan Glow. This is the thing you need to buy to activate that four digit feature on the Norfolk and Western Class A Lionel's Base 3. It comes with such features like. These lines, which do absolutely nothing but make the thing more expensive. You can use it to control both Bluetooth, Lion Chief, and Legacy. That's all the features, but if you don't have an iPhone, you can't use this thing at all. It comes with the four digit numbering, I already mentioned that earlier. But, by the looks of this, the only engine in the entire catalog that can actually work on this feature is the Lionel Class A's. And that's it. Well, maybe we'll have more in next catalog, but seriously, why can't Lionel give this feature to, to other engines in this catalog? I don't know if I should buy this thing. Should I buy it? Well, you know what? I don't think my legacy remote's gonna last forever. You wanna know what I will. This thing we've got is some Vision Line horse cars. You know, Lionel's been making lots of different Vision Line rolling stock, but the only features they've been getting so far is just sounds. Like, just sounds. Man, you know what? I would love to see a Vision Line piece of rolling stock with motorized doors. That would be cool. I would like to introduce you to the very first Lionel 2104 that chose whistle steam instead of cylinder steam. I just saw a picture of a Kansas City Southern 2104 and this model looks more accurate than I thought it would be. I also don't think that 5022 has been preserved. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is called the T1s. This one, of course. Lionel decided to remake the Boston and Main T1s. It's the engine that coincidentally has the exact same numbering system as the Union Pacific Big Boys. As a hood, it has a derailment problem backing up. The real one, not the model. This tooling was supposed to be for Boston and Maine, yet only one of them has Boston and Maine. Can't Lionel do the Santa Fe one with this tooling? Santa Fe had an engine that looks just like that. This is the first time Lionel's doing it with whistle steam. Which explains why it costs $350 more than the original. 
hey, at least it's got a lot more features than the original. Look! Lion is bringing back the Southern Pacific 442 Atlantics, but without the Southern Pacific. I'm at least glad it's got the rear marker lights, because those marker lights change color. Wasn't that long ago since Lionel made this, when you compare it to other remakes. Maybe I'll get to New York Central. Yeah, I know I already have an engine like this, but this one's different. It's got five different whistles and changing color lights, and it's gonna be in different colors and a different road name. Lionel's coming out with an 060 tender engine. Now, one thing about this engine is that there's a wire connecting the engine to the tender because all the electronics could not fit in the engine. Now, if any collectors want to say this wire makes the engine look ugly, I want to say this. Just pretend it's a water hose connecting the engine to the tender, sucking up water from the tender and squirting it into the boiler. I actually like the fact that this engine has a wire connecting to the engine to the tender. I mean, it's gonna lead to less trouble on the switches. Yeah, engines this small have trouble on the switches. I would rather have a little trouble connecting the engine and tender than to have trouble on the switches. And this prevents trouble on the switches. Now, this one is gonna have trouble on the switches because there is no wire connecting the engine to the tender. Why? I mean, this one is smaller, so it is definitely gonna have more trouble on the switches than the other one. Next up we've got is the RS-27s, which were a former MTH tooling. The paint schemes we've got is Elko, that big big failure known as the Penn Central, the one that bought that big Failure known as the Penn Central Conrail. A railroad with the name of a city that has the football team I hate. <laughs> the railroad that's in the same colors of the football team I hate. <laughs> and the railroad named with a word that means take your money away legally. Next up is a tiny little diesel known as the SW-1. And based on the location of the bell, I don't know if it's going to be possible for Lionel to give this a swinging bell feature. Next up are the ES-44s. Looks like all of them are heritage units. Lionel decided to make the new Canadian National Heritage Units. They're all available at powered and non-powered. Except for U.S. Armed Forces. The SD-40-2s. Die-hard LEGO train collectors should be familiar with this one. They come with kinematic pilots, but take a look at these pilots! I mean, it looks like they're not connected to this part at all. There's like a big gap between them. It looks like they're connected to the wheels instead of this part. Kinematic pilots are supposed to make the train look like it's more realistic when it's on a straight track or when nothing's coupled to it on a curve. Compare it to the ES-44 ACs. Now the SD-90 Max. How possibly can you find one that's not Canadian Pacific? Oh, check the next page. Also, all the Canadian Pacific ones should have been done in SD-7 days, not SD-9 days! The next up we've got is the F-40s. 
Lionel does realize that Amtrak's not the only one that makes F40s. I would love a, a Metra F40. In fact, I would love it if Lionel does a Metra F40 in this paint scheme. Now, we've got the F40 cabbage cars. They're baggage cars and cab cars mixed. They've got their diesel engines removed. They're dummy units. They have no electric motors. They cannot pull. They can only be pushed or pulled. You need another engine to push or pull them. And I was wondering if I could do a consist with a Lion Chief Plus 2.0 P42 and this Cabbage F40. I was wondering if that was possible to do a consist on, with a legacy remote of those two. Next up is that we've got the F7AA sets. This time they're doing the Santa Fe in yellow! Can you believe it? Yellow in silver. I actually love the Union Pacific one. Now, if you want to find a cheaper way to use the Super Bass B unit, there's some F9AB sets. But none of them are in a popular road name. Next up is that we've got the Union Pacific Rocket Booster Trade. And boy, that doesn't look like a NASA space rocket. That looks like a nuclear missile. Now, some people think that the colors of a freight car look pretty boring. But don't worry, some people are gonna fix that, even if it's freaking illegal. Now you can simulate that fact by buying freight cars with graffiti. There's a mystery on your train layout. Which one of these O-scale figures spray-painted the freight cars? One of them is gonna be locked up for a very long time. <laughs> well, end of the video, but not the review. Click on part two for more.